that's what I'm headed to. Mm. That's Big Brutus. And let's go find out what that's all about. In a quarter mile, turn left. We'll arrive at your destination. Check out the Big Brutus Museum and Visitor Center. That was Big Brutus. So let's go check. It. So this bucket here, we call it a 40 cubic yard dipper. That'll hold 40 cubic yards of earth. And to get an idea of just how big it really is, I can reach up almost to eight foot, and that's at this back corner. Do you think that's pretty darn big, isn't it? That's nothing. Wait till you see the one on uh, Big Brutus. And this cable that they line the walkway with, this is what was used on Big Brutus to lift the bucket. It weighs uh, 25 pounds per foot. They have quite, quite a nice display of uh, machinery. Uh, this is a prospect grill. Hey, I think my neighbors still have one of those. They might still use it. Anyway, why are these big things here? You know, I just not really I just keep wondering what, what were they mining that they needed such big equipment? here in southeast Kansas. Coal. And they, uh, well, let's get over here. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's what it was. And Big Brood is here. As we get closer and closer, this was never used to actually mine coal. This is used to um, remove the overburden, or you know, like think of it as the earth on top of the, the coal. And of course, I'm not gonna let us climb all the way up in there, <laughs> which would be way too cool. Look at that excavator shovel, whatever you want to call it, over there. And then compare it to this. <laughs> it's amazing. Hey, remember that just a moment ago I showed you a 40 yard bucket. This is the tracks. And this, I'm reaching up to the top of the tracks is just about as high as the, the short side of that bucket. When we get down here to Big Brutus's bucket, this thing could move 130 to 150 cubic tons or tons of material. impressive but you didn't have to faint on me. Wake up. Oh 
get an idea of the size, again, that's the, top, the short side of that bucket. I'm on the short side of this, and it's another four feet higher. This thing is massive. Okay, so this was 90 cubic yards is what this would hold, and um, which is double the size of that, that bucket we first saw. And let's see, it said I think 150 feet out. I'm gonna just sit in that control up there, scooping this up and then dumping it in a big truck or whatever. It says they could uh, run a cycle every 55 seconds. So that's a lot of earth moving in 55 seconds. Hey, looks like I can go up this. Just not from that backside. So groundsman, I said, was uh, one of the three people. He's got some controls here made up the operating crew. His job was to move the shovel by operating the crawlers, instructed by the operator who sets up above, before and back, you know, so on. Uh, he had to ensure that the ground around the machine was level and clear of obstructions, notified by phone or by horn signal when it was necessary to move. So basically, this was his station watching that beast eat away at the earth. They could walk around, obviously. Man, just think of the, the power running through all that. Well, it's going up. This is what I pivoted on. frame everything above this uh, rotated on this roller circle which uh, roller circle is 45 feet in diameter and the rollers are each 19 inches in diameter and there's 90 of those rollers each of them angel or we're all lubricated from a central lubrication so you got the that's what that line was a bigger line coming, so it's pumping grease through this into each of these. And this could actually turn it around uh, 360 degrees. So what we're looking at here are the motor mounts. Motors aren't here anymore, but they put in there were uh, two. 3,500 horsepower electric AC motors that mounted in the center, and they ran 13 DC motors, and the DC motors were what operated the winch and the swing and the crowd, whatever that is. I'm gonna go up this way first. I like that they can open up the door here and get some air and keep things cool. These are the swing gear boxes I uh, used to swing the house, driven by a 750 horsepower direct current electric motor, which probably isn't here anymore. Now we're up in the control room. And this is where the operator would sit. Really, not a whole lot different 
than the back holes and stuff that I've run. Uh, because there's a couple of foot pedals and different, you know, a knob uh, breech from left, up, down, retract, and all the controls. But you can sit up here and really get a good view of what you're digging. And of course, um, if you can see it, is that there's the bottom of that bucket it can open up. So you scoop it up, hold it out over wherever you're dumping it, and just open up the bottom and drop right out, slam shut, move on to the next one. So while Big Brutus was running, he didn't get onto the stairs and climb up like we did. Uh, there was an elevator. It's not operational now because the, the motors that run it are no longer here, but Remember the cable at the uh, along the um, the walkway? Well, this is the drum. It wound on at eight 500 horsepower DC motors and 800 feet of wire rope on each side. So 800 there, 800 there. Then the uh, the main barrel and attached gears. We had a total of 93 and a half tons. So that's what I see. And then eight, almost nine buses of my buses. Wow. Okay, so you're picking up a lot of earth in the buckets way out front and you need to counterbalance that. So back here underneath the motors, which probably weighed a lot, um, there was a, a 1.7 million pounds of ballast in tanks underneath here to balance out the bucket out front when it was full. Yeah. And what was the bucket? It held 150 tons. So, ah. Uh, 150 tons, 300,000 pounds, 1.7 million plus you got the arm, the bucket, all that stuff. So yeah, 1.7 million pounds back here makes sense. It's over more weight in the back, over the back of the treads than is hanging out in front of them. So, and of course, if you went down into the low ground in the mines, you might have been using stuff like these. Uh, but here, I do believe um, it was a strip mine. They stripped off the overburden with Big Brutus and then got down in with um, other equipment. So let's go outside and uh, let's go look around some more, see what we can find here. But outside there's some more equipment. So how'd you steer this beast? Well, see this big piston here on that pivot? And the same on the, the front, it's one on each tread, and they could steer it that way. It's not like a tank that you would speed up one side and uh, slow down the other or forward or reverse, although that might have played into it, but they could steer this thing. Um, so, get, I like when I come out of this, I get a more more my scale, kind of uh, bigger. This is a small Lauren uh, shovel. What I could have done with this if I had this back in the day. I sure as heck would have had a bigger pond. So this is a 1920 page drag line, model 222. It's got a hundred foot boom and a three and a third yard bucket. Let's go take a look inside. If you ever wonder what the, uh, the drill bit that they use for drilling uh, wells, well, that would be what that is. Anyway.
Now that is a diesel engine. A little bit bigger than the one on my bus. So this was originally uh, used in Louisiana in the 30s to uh, dredge sandbars in the river. And then uh, in the 1930s, late 30s, they paid people 10 cents an hour to take this apart and ship it by rail up here to Kansas and where it was re uh, reassembled in the uh, with the Wilkins and used in the strip mine overburden on the Ware City area. And they used it in coal mining until the early 50s. And uh, and it sat next to the pit, last pit that it dug until 91 when it was donated and uh, volunteers from this museum spent five years uh, tearing it apart and uh, reassembling it here and here's the operator's seat and right next to it is the cable that runs out so I'm guessing you walking around in here you're gonna want to be real careful with that moving cable but if you look it's pretty much the same kind of setup like I said it's big Brutus or the uh, or a um, modern backhoe you got a couple foot pedals, probably left, right, up, down, three levers to run. You got a few valves uh, for pressure. I'm guessing that a lot of this was uh, air pressure. And uh, so there's a bucket. We're going to go take a look at uh, outside and take a look at that size of that bucket compared to the others. Still similar, you know, it's a big Brutus, although these are like about a foot and individually done. Older, much older technology. And of course, this worked by dropping the bucket and then hauling it in. Uh, so I was dragging it to fill it. And I ran along here on uh, dual rails. So they would have been building the, the rails behind it as it dug out the overburden as it backed up. And this bucket Lots of holes for draining out the water, I'm guessing. And uh, I got a series of other buckets over here. Another drag bucket, another smaller version of what that one. And to get an idea, there's this steam shovel. This I really think is a steam shovel and big Brutus. So let's go, let's go up and take a look at this one. Okay, so I was wrong. This is not a steam shovel. This is an ancestor of that. Um, you know, it's the siding and what's sort of unique, well, really unique about this, this is homemade. Guy didn't buy this from a manufacturer. He built this. His name was Perry Markle and uh, he made this uh, from parts that he got out of junkyards. And if he couldn't get it out of a junkyard, he made plans and had a foundry make them. They must have had way better junkyards back in the 30s. Um, his original, this is his second one. His original was uh, 
this was steam powered and it was much smaller than this but he he learned from that and this one he ran off of a automobile engine and the uh his neighbors all told him that you couldn't get enough power out of a automobile engine so uh in true uh genius fashion he took and listened to people tell him what he couldn't do and then went and did it so again the control seat pretty simple couple pedals this one three pedals so there's probably two brakes on this and a couple of levers to operate things now uh, i'm just amazed he made this out of or made this homemade so it sort of gives me inspiration to uh say yeah you can't afford to buy it make it um i guess his, he this guy was a genius he he invented tools to make to build things or fix things and they said uh his neighbors would look at his tools and they couldn't even name what some of them were uh he would fix everything uh if you got a piece of a farm equipment that doesn't work call perry he'll fix it so anyway uh, i think that's going to do it for here i see the battery's about to go dead on me and so i'm going to get on the road and we'll see where i find the next thing All right See you down the road, my friends. Stay safe. I know it's impressive, but you didn't have to faint on me. Wake up.